Hello one and all and welcome to Hearthstone Half Hour. Today, it is of course the Year of the Kraken. Um, and I'm kind of bored of seeing the same old Cthulhu decks. So I've been playing around with this deck which is a very cheap hunter deck. Which is based around the idea of control. I'm sure you've seen variants of this in the past, and it's just kind of a uh, iteration upon that, really, with the newer stuff. I feel like Carrying Grub, you know, it's a really underrated card. And I want to see if we can get some really good usage out of it. Um, I've been playing t play testing with this for a bit now and trying out different things. The uh, new Dragon Hawk with a 5 5 um, with Wind Fury. I was using that, using that card for a bit, but um, in the end I uh, decided it wasn't uh, useful enough in enough of the circumstances. It tends to get eliminated quite quickly, which is good in some circumstances when it's a nice uh, magnet for stuff to be took out. Do you hear its call? No, I didn't. Um, so we're playing on a, a real strong Cthulhu deck here, really, and um, we're going to play Animal Companion. Um, and that works out perfectly. Like I say, this deck's more of a control deck rather than a rush, so don't go in. If you're planning on playing this deck, you need to consider that you know you you don't need to be rushing the face all the time. It's a lot more Are slower pace. And against the Cthulhu deck, it's I mean it's perfect um, material to be showing you uh, how it fares. I will go for one of the uh, newer stuff, uh, newer cards, which uh, you'll be able to see. It's kind of a replacement for Haunted Creeper, it's Infested Wolf. In my opinion, it's a lot better though, just because um, it's a tricky one here, actually. Could have done with a Timber Wolf in our hand. Um, I'm almost thinking we just uh, ignore it. For a change, Dex is going to do a bit of rushing. Just because I feel like he needs to make a trade here because it's, I'm going to have to waste a lot of stuff at that Azul Drake. I do acknowledge that the, st the, spell, the, the spell damage is there. And, you know, you've got to be able to decide, you know, do I need to be taking care of this immediately? And I'll very what much uh, be able to see to whether I've uh, made the right choice or not. He's thinking of fireballing it. Um, Frostbolt maybe, it'll be up to four. Forbidden Torch, same sort of scenario here. And he can kind of ping it if he chooses to. Ooh, has he got an arcane explosion? Arcane missiles, so we wanted to not hit two of them. That was a bit much to ask, I suppose. Um, going into this turn... I'm thinking we just take out with a quick shot. We can't let it get out of hand too long, so we're going to... Uh, Follow up with a carrion grub. We haven't got a harm masters in our hand at the minute, which is a great kind of combo with the carrion grub. It's kind of an updated version of the uh, river crocolis, which I play in this deck as well. Oh wow, what a lucky um, free cost for him! Now I'm really struggling now to decide what's best to play. But I think that's probably what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to sacrifice that Tundra Rhino is going now. Be but, you know, that if I'd have played the Animal Companion, it would have left me with four wasted mana. I mean, I could have used two of it on the Steady Shot, but it's just the best mana usage, and it got rid of something on the board. Whereas Animal Companion was a bit of a risk. Because two out of the three choices wouldn't have got the job done. I can't leave him with a Flame what Walker. <laughs> He's getting quite good statted uh, free drops. Uh, 
Obviously, a Savannah High Mange looking like I'll play. If he's smart, he'll trade the Trun Tundra oh, Rhino in. Master. He'll take it out. But I don't know if he will. Yeah, he has. So he's, he's done the smart play. So what I've got to do here is... Go for a pretty stable play. I mean, he can get rid of everything it brings out and such pretty easily, pretty effectively. He's got control of the game at the minute. But as you can see, the deck's holding its own at the minute. I am surprised he's got a polymorph. I didn't know if he would have one. Then again, though, if he's using the base, like, standard choice of the, uh, mage, then I suppose he would. My draw's gonna be quite important here. Because it could really change what I'm playing next turn. Okay. So I would say I'm gonna have to be really risky here. Kind of hope you can't finish me here. You need a pyroblast, you know, some sort of 10 damage spell combination to go for. It's pretty likely. But he hasn't. He hasn't got it available. So he's forced to trade. How much he's trading, I'm not sure. Is that enough? Leok, Leok, Leok. Oh, oh. It's not quite enough. Well played. I'll take a chance. Maybe, you know, I played that a bit wrong, but I imagine he's got game now. Would Leok have done it? Uh, it'd have given me two extra damage. I suppose not. Ouch. It's not enough, though. It's not enough. Oh, wow, this is down to the wire. Come on, we need to pull a really good two damage or more. King's help. Ah. Tundra Rhino. Ah. Still, I think you'd uh, agree that was a really close game. A well played is in order. Well played. That was a really close game, to say the least. Um, let's hope we have better luck in our second game. As always, you know, it's two games. This week I'm not doing a tavern brawl. I'm going to experiment, see if you guys prefer it without. It's nicer on me if you don't, but, you know. We'll see. Rexa versus Liadrin! My hammer burns with holy fire. Let the hunt begin. So, on the hunt, we've got it ready to go. I called a deck, quite a few decks that, before the card was actually made, so that's quite cool. We're too spell heavy at the minute. But on the hunt, it's going to be quite useful in the early game. Especially for coins. Mind if yeah, that works perfect. We've got no immediate other play, so... That's a massive advantage, especially against a Paladin. Where their main like play will be the uh, Reinforce. Emperor Cobra. I'm running one of. Kind of good 
um, tight situations where you're just in need of uh, setting up late rem later removal, I suppose. Obviously it lacks a little on stats, but that's okay. Makes the opponent think a bit more. It probably will need a bit of fine tuning. I know I even put in some more. I can't even think. Maybe a trap or two. I mean, I don't run any traps. I'm considering maybe putting a bear trap in, but hmm. I don't know. Based on my oh, early no. analysis of uh, the main difference, what the. Uh, Whispers of the Old God expansions brought in. I seem to find that stuff like Consecration, any like two damage board wipes, has become a lot less effective. But maybe that's just me. I tend to find you've got a lot more sticklers on the field. Not on my watch. Tundurana, that works out good. Yeah, we'll do it that way. So I don't think it would take it out with the Divine Shield. Unfortunately. And I get to keep my Tundra Rhino, hopefully. Okay, so what happens here? Oh, Divine Shield, okay. Oh, I can deal with that. Can he de deal with my counterplay? That's the question. I'm trying to get rid of any divine shields and minute he plays them because, based on how the deck runs, that was a really silly play actually. Quite a misplay. He was too eager to want to consecrate because he would have got a divine shield on his new selfless hero, but you know. The way of things. We'll go Stampede Encoder. Now it's probably a bit silly because we could have got rid of it with the Tundra Rhino and uh, kept this for when a uh, Divine Shield based menu came out, but I think I'm okay doing it this way. None I think it's probably the most competitive deck I've shown off. Potentially. Um. Once again, really nice trade opportunity. Um, however, probably want to do this first. Just want to put ourselves in a stronger control environment. Like I've got an automatic reaction to the reinforce. The divine shields have got a reaction also. Follow the rules. Aldo, I can deal with. That works out even better. <laughs> because the spider's a beast. I'm going to get even more damage in. And we're just kind of slowly whittling him down. I mean, Consecration, we do have to worry about here, but it leaves us with a 2 free Rhino if that happens. So, as you can see, I'm kind of just no letting things go along. I've noticed Black Knight being, you know, a lot more popular because of Foon's, uh, the card what lets it be a taunt. So here, what we're wanting to do is bait out whether that is. Get down! Gonna play this. And basically see how much we can leave them with. But I've got just enough. 
Well played. Wow. That was a better result. So as you can see, it's Dex doing a real competitive game here. Uh, as always, this is half hour, and we do like to um, mix it up a bit. As far as... Um, what was I going to say? I have no idea. Basically, I'll just play one more, because, you know, I like to fill the time of half hour. Three solid games, because at the minute we won one with the deck, so we need a uh, definitive answer if it's good or not. I think even in the first game, you've seen how close it was. And Control Hunt has always been good. I just felt that, you know, it was worth revisiting. Especially because I didn't have a lot of the uh, decks, like, fine-tuned yet. Like, I want to do a Choices deck. I want to show off a Battle Cry deck. Um... I'm working on a Paladin deck, um, as you can see all of them, uh, which is based on kind of a lot of healing with Cthulhu, you know, it's a lot of shenanigans. I must protect the wild. Let's go hunt. Hello one and all and welcome to Hearthstone Half Hour. And we are back for some more of the same. Um I'm pretty happy with how this uh hand is and that makes it even better with Infested Wolf. Haven't seen how man's how Master gets some play yet. Now, I did add River Crocolisk, and to be honest, it's been going well for me. But, maybe that's just me. Who knows. Now, we are against a druid, so we've had a nice range of uh, classes to go against. Now, our turn two play is going to be the tricky one, because we haven't got anything. It may be that we use on the Hunter's reactionary card, maybe. Maybe we'll draw into something, or maybe we'll even just go for a steady shot. Who knows. It's all up in the air. So as it turns out, we're just going to reactionary uh, on the hunt. Get rid of his beckoner of evil. Don't like it when our evil's beckoned, do we? So this is kind of a penultimate game, and then I'll just go over the deck list, as well as kind of give you an insight on why I picked the cards I did. Even though I've kind of done that throughout. Just to kind of round up the time. But if I'm not on the dot, well, that's just how it is. So our carry on grub is in play. Really tough card for him to take out now, really. Because Swipe won't quite do it. Even though he may play it anyway. Ooh. Playing a 2 2 slime. Uh, I actually think it benefits me more to do this. Just because I get a perfect trade, it just works out better. I like to keep the board clear as a, when I'm playing this kind of control. Now I've kind of got, you know, Tundra Rhino, I've got Animal Companion Plus, Steady Shot, I've got plays next turn. I did put me in swipe range, but you know, it was the best play I feel. Has he got something to follow up with? No, good. So I mean, if I was to join to Savannah High main next turn, I mean, that would be perfect, but we've got loads of plays available to us, which is good.
one thing sure, we'll make sure how Master gets played because he hasn't yet. He's not had his chance to shine. Ten ten now. Oof. Gotta be careful. I'm about late game. We have to go for a more defensive player's turn with Infested Wolf. His Disciple of Cthulhu and Wrath combo. I mean, that was nice. I'll give him that. Who knows what secrets will it's a shame that Disciple of Cthulhu isn't a beast. You'd think he would be, given his Pandaren. But, you know. So, so this is a real problem here, really. A real headache. This is a good stopper to that. If it took out the one, I don't mind, because I'm going to start rushing, to be honest. Maybe a bit impatient of me to do that, but I just feel I'm in a good position to do so. I've kind of started to get the right cards into play. I'm thinking of how mass to play next time. Ouch. He gets double as well. <coughs> I know I should have got rid of Bran. That's what happens when you let Bran just run wild. That's ultimately misplay. Do that. Play him. There, we took them all out. See what next turn he has for me. Even with that misplowing, I hope I can turn it around. And Cthulhu's next turn for him if he has it in hand. Ah. That hurts, just to see that. In a crazy way. But I think I've lost this just due to the fact that I didn't take out South and Cthulhu. Before, you know, playing the, um... Let's do that. We're running low on options. I definitely think he's got it, especially if he's got Cthulhu. You know, I've lost two Cthulhu decks, it's not good. There he is again. Maybe quick shot can save us still. Let's just throw it at him. I can't do that. Come on, we can do this. It's not out of the realms of possibility. The ancient one calls. Yeah, I've lost this now. Surrender. Well fought. What a way to end it, eh? That one misplay. That's what happens when you stop going control. It was more me justifying the misplay of playing Stampede Encoder first. To say it was Rush. 
But anyway, before I go, I'll leave you with the deck list as well as a little rundown of why pip cards I have. And you can suggest improvements or changes. Like, Cthulhu's the obvious one, like making it more Cthulhu centred, but for now I just wanted to try something a bit different. So I've got two on the hunts, which, to be honest, I've liked. I think they work out really well. Uh, you get so much value out of them, especially, you know, if you're using them alongside, say, a Tundra Rhino, where you can get a one attack hit as well. I mean, it's just, it talks for itself. I want one Timberwolf. You may make an argument for two, but one just seems to work out just well for me. Uh, the deck doesn't really have any draw power except for quick shot if you have an empty hand, so that's something to keep in mind of. You may want to make it more draw heavy with maybe an acolyte or a, uh, oh, what's that gnome? The 2 1 2 cost. Uh, I can't think off the top of my head. I really should be able to know. Uh, let's just have a look for him, shall we? Just to make it less vague for you guys. Um, maybe a little later. There, Loot Hoarder. That's who I was thinking of. Uh, so yeah, you may consider him. Oh, I do run King's Elk, which, you know, if it goes your way, you'll get some card draw out of that. Which is a nice early game card alongside uh, Huge Toad. They both seem to uh, fill out two spot nicely alongside River Crocolisk. Which, partly I use because it's golden and I like a gold card. But, um, it seems to work well. When the deck, you know, sometimes the deck doesn't, you know, perform quite as you'd want it to. You may just get stuck with a bad hand. Or you might make a misplay like you see me do. A pretty crucial misplay with, um, the brand's bond beard. Which I really should have took out. But, you know, it happens. Um, Animal Companion, Kill Command, Unleash the Hounds, and Carrion Grub, and Emperor Cobra fill out your free spots. So as you can see, it's very much centred around the free spots. Basically, all the lower, like, between 2 and 4 is where the main bulk of your deck is, really. I would say. Um, Kill Commands are obviously a nice finish. Unleash your hounds once again, you know, it's really useful to have that, you know, extra damage burst, especially alongside a Timberwolf. Uh, Carrion Grub, as I've said, it seems like it's an unsung hero of a card, which I'm trying to, you know, bring into play a bit more. Um, and then you have Emperor Cobra, who's just nice as a little removal card you have lying around for when it's needed. Uh, obviously there's stuff what has been released in the new set which is like death rattle base and stuff and I might use a death rattle hunter at some point but I wanted to make like a really cheap effective card. I think it totaled out a uh, 1,040 dust or 1,140 dust, I can't remember. Obviously that's if everything was common rather than gold. Um, but yeah most of this is really easily acquirable so if you was uh, new to the game then this is a nice deck to start with I would say gets you kind of used to the like the ability to control the board more but obviously I can see why a lot of people are going and jumping on the Cthulhu bandwagon the bandwagon and it makes sense uh, Armoured Warhorse I've run one of these uh, you probably haven't seen it in the whole uh, free game so I don't think you have anyway uh, which is just a nice charge finish if you can get it to work obviously uh, and you know, five damage burst is always uh, nice to see. Uh, How Master, obviously, this is you know your bread and butter card, which is a really nice combo maker with your lower stuff like your River Crocolisks and your Carrion Grubs, which will really you know total them out at having really nice stats at four five or uh, four seven, and really hard to deal with in the early game. And um, then, of course, to fill out your fours is Infested Wolf, which is kind of a improved version of Haunted Creeper now that Haunted Creeper is like null and void in the standard game. Um, and I would say it's really uh, worth playing. It's, I mean, it's a lot better just because of the fact that the spiders are cast as beast as well, which uh, really helps out. And then for your five spots, you've got one Stampini Kodo and two Tundra Rhinos. I think the Tundra Rhinos work really well also as you know having a lot of charge potential in the turn especially being able to go turn 5 Tundra and if it survives going into the turn 6 Savannah it's worth thinking about 
Um, some being Kodo, obvious value there. And then to fill it out, two Savannah High mains because they're just absolutely, just the, the absolute, just complete MVP of a control hunter deck, really. It's, you know, hard to make a case not to use them. So, yes, I hope you've enjoyed. Um, let, like I say, let me know, like, your ideas for, like, later episodes of Hearthstone Half Hour and what decks you'd like to see. Uh, like I say, suggestions on how you would change this deck and what you think of it as a whole. And if you use it, I suppose. Uh, thank you for watching and goodbye. <laughs>